going to go for it again. All right, please put your hands together and welcome Simon Kett. I love how Sean Bellum used um, food on his robe as a euphemism for tissues full of loneliness. <laughs> That's a sad moment for comedy, I think. Yes, food. <laughs> anyway, um, it's a nice little crowd here. It's, it's fucking freezing tonight, isn't it? I'm surprised we've had so many people. It's so cold. Like, this is the kind of weather where you resent getting horny. <laughs> See, they know. <laughs> I understand. Your partner's looking at you saying, how are we going to do this? Are we going to form a fabric airlock between my fly and your vagina? Or are we going to get balls to the wall sexy and have a little one trouser leg off lovemaking time? Will it be? Oh, love, 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 love. Love is a battlefield where the guns burst into tears to win every argument. Uh, notice they laugh less at that one. Interesting. Interesting. Um, I'm, uh, I'm going to be trying out a few newish things tonight, so that this should be, this should be fun. Um, I, I, I just finished actually doing a gig, I did a gig just before here, uh, over in North Richmond. Being honest, is there anything about me that looks like I want meth? Uh, like anything, do I look particularly methy and I'm just, like I've got all my own teeth, there's no gats. Okay, it's a very, very strange moment, but then you come here, and it's exactly the same. Like, I love the north side, south side. People still approach me to get meth. I have no drugs, nothing to give you. Um, but I did like American backpackers. There's a shitload of them uh, around the place. By a round of applause, who here tonight would like to learn how to destroy an American's mind using just the power of your words? <laughs> okay. Sometimes I don't even finish that sentence and people are just like, fucking yeah! Death to the infidels! Um, it's, it's, it's a pretty simple process. Um, first, find an American. Um, fairly easy to do. You'll generally hear them long before you ever see them. Uh, and then engage them in a conversation. Uh, have a chat with them. And then say something like, wow, I love your accent. Where are you from? And this is the beautiful part. When they reply, America, pretend you've never heard of the place. <laughs> They have no ability to deal with that, it's amazing. You'll actually hear fires starting in the side of the head. It's so good. And then ever so softly in the distance, you'll just hear Bill O'Reilly just gently, gently weeping. Uh, I, I looked in the, the paper today, I noticed that um, Converse are in a bit of trouble because their uh, employees in Indonesia are getting whipped and beaten with shoes and screamed at and just horrible, horrible kind of thing. And they're, they're a subsidiary of Nike, so never before has their sort of bio line of JUST DO IT uh, ever been more apt. <laughs> Seems to be working with the this going around now. Um, moving right along. Oh, fuck it, why not? Um, <laughs> Actually, it's interesting that Sean Bellum used the word pussy before. Um, I've never, I've never, I've never understood that whole term, like pussy in the pejorative kind of mean that, you know, denoting weakness. I've never understood that because, like, vaginas clean themselves in blood and they spit out whole people. <laughs> Pretty hardcore in my books. That's, like, what, like, what does a penis do? It occasionally stands up, vomits, and then it passes out. <laughs> What a pussy. <laughs> oh, so, uh, I, uh, I, I, I did, uh, I, yesterday I did this massive, like, tremendous... Okay, I did the kind of poo that makes you sympathetic to pregnant women, basically. <laughs> um, see, again, they totally, yeah, they understand, right, the ladies? What with our Anne Hathaway films and our travelling pants? Right on, sisters. Keep it going, right on. Uh, but, I, but I think I did such a tremendous poo that I now carry a photo of in my wallet to show strangers because I, I've recently just become a vegetarian and um, like not a strict vegetarian though because I still eat eggs uh, but I am pro-abortion so kind of makes sense really. Um, uh, you're the one eating chickens periods, don't you get all crazy. Uh, abortion's a tricky subject though, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a rough one because like, I don't want to harm a living fetus, but I do want to kill children, so I feel like 
Yeah, like maybe that's a scheduling conflict. Like I reckon if we could just up the uh, the, the limit from third trimester to the moment it opens its mouth in a cafe, then I, I think we'd all be chuffed with that, right? I fucking hate young mothers are pricks, uh, basically in cafes. Like they've got this residual god complex from creating life through their magical vagina. Hey, someone's been paying attention through the wine. Nice. Um, <clears throat> But they do, they do, and they, they just get this kind of awful god complex. And like, the moment they, they have such, like, they'll spend nine months nurturing this beautiful life inside, nine beautiful months. And then the moment they've kicked the baby out of their Narnia flaps, <laughs> they will just strap that toddler into a, like, a stroller and ram it into shins like a Russian icebreaker in the Arctic, just, oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, God, this is like mowing a lawn made of people that won't get the fuck Assholes. Um, I guess is how I would wrap that all up. Uh, my, my girlfriend had a very tricky week uh, the other week. She went from thinking that her boyfriend doesn't look at porn to finding a small folder on the desktop of my computer that strongly disagreed with those opinions. Uh, but, but she was totally cool with it. I, I've dated a lot of girls that do not like porn, and I totally get it. You know, like. A lot of women want sex to be an expression of intimacy, and I get that, like, and a lot of guys want that as well, obviously. Having said that, sometimes coming just stops me killing. <laughs> it does, it does. There's no, no hyperbole here. An orgasm is the murder reset button inside every dude's head. Like, absolutely. Like, these drunk guys out the front of a kebab store punching any dude that makes eye contact. There were no buttons reset that night. There's no <laughs> lipstick on the willies for those guys. So when you think of it in that context, porn stars are the real peacekeepers of the world. <laughs> they are, they are. Sluts are very underrated in this society. They are. Don't get quiet. Don't hate the sluts. Don't hate the sluts. I mean, hate them enough to keep them thin, obviously. <laughs> but, um, like, don't go overboard, you know? Like, if you hate sluts, you hate peace and freedom, and you love nerds getting bashed. Because <laughs> slutty girls are the only kind of people that will fuck the type of douchebag that messes up this genre of head. <laughs> That's why every time I'm in a bar like this and I see a tipsy girl say something like, Wanna see if I can fit my whole hand in my mouth? I think, thank you. Thank you. Out there, say your lines. <laughs> Brave soul out there in the trenches. Hell, you are the trenches. <laughs> Job bless the sluts. I, uh, I, I'm actually quite poor. Um, and don't let this throw you off. Like, like I actually live in Brighton, uh, which is again weird. Like, I think I, I live in the only apartment in Brighton. Uh, when they were showing it to people, they were like, I like it. Does it come in mansion? Do you, know it? Do you have anything with a koi pond I can ride my jet ski in? Anything? Do you have anything that would make my cold South African wife touch my lip dead penis? Uh, anything? Well, we'll pass, I'm afraid. We'll pass. But, uh, it's a... It's a weird, weird suburb to live in Brighton. Now. It's, it's like filled with the elderly, just pensioners and no husbands. You never ever see a husband. I, I think they're mythical in that, that suburb. But just old age pensioners, which is awesome because of the op shops there, you know? Like, this is all op shops because every time there's a cold snap like tonight, bam, new outfit tomorrow. It's, it's awesome. I love those guys. I, know, I, I, I do feel a bit weird in, in Brighton because there's a lot of the ladies actually uh, have started doing that Brangelina thing where they've started to adopt like little little black babies, and they're just they, and it's it's cool like it should be encouraged because obviously they're helping out someone less fortunate. But there's nothing more heartbreaking than hearing a woman scream at her child, "You're no matching accessory of mine." It, it breaks your heart. It does. But I, I think they're underestimating it because there's going to be some weird family reunions when that kid turns 18, you know? Imagine just showing them the bling on your fingers and saying, every sparkle is the soul of a dead relative. There you go. <laughs> yeah, not for everyone, obviously. <laughs> I've got five minutes of Down syndrome material that will melt your fucking head, but I'm not gonna get to that tonight. Yes. Okay. Yes. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's cool. Another girl hating me. Shit, how will I survive? Just walk out of here with my sweet cardigan. Uh, I, I, I'm actually, I'm a bit of an asshole. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm an asshole and I'm a nice guy. I think you can kind of straddle both of those realms. Like, I, I don't watch The Biggest Loser, that kind of whole phenomenon swept past me. I never really saw it. But my friends loved it, and they would go on and on about it, and I would think, just think, it sounds stupid. But they would always say, like, no, no, it's really empowering to see people, like, make a positive change in their life, you know, find a problem, and then take the steps to overcome it. So I would think, okay, maybe I'm judging it wrongly. But then again, it was, like, never more than a few sentences in before they finally cut to the heart of the matter and said, and I just like watching fat people cry. <laughs> it's, just, it's just something about it. It makes me happy. I don't, and I would think my friends are such assholes, and uh, I would just think my friends are terrible people, but I, I recently started working in a cafe, and every time a morbidly obese lady comes in, she'll look at the cakes and I'll immediately think, oh, someone's gonna buy a little pile of shame cakes. And then the worst bit is they never do. They get like a green salad, and then they just, you know, a green tea, and they're so polite, which compounds it. Like, I just feel like such an asshole. Like, I spend their lunch hour hating me. And then when they go, they, you know, I'm extra polite because they don't know about the whirlwind of crazy that's been in my head with my own monologue. And they're like, thank you, thank you so much. It was very lovely. I'll come again. Actually, I might just grab a few cakes. Ah, oh, thank fuck. <laughs> For a minute there, I thought I was a complete prick, but uh, you're going to go out to your car and eat the cakes, crying, saying, is this what my emotions taste like? Oh, but... So clearly, I'm lovely like a rainbow, which is reaffirming. Uh, on that note, I think I'd like to bid you all adieu. Fucking everybody.